Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar uh, on presenting the activities of three Asian partners of the 10 YFP Sustainable Public Procurement Program. My name is Irina Wazun, and um, I'm a consultant at UNEP office um, in Paris, the Division of Technology, Industry, and Economics. Uh, before we start the webinar, I would like to give you a short introduction to the GoToWebinar tool if you have never used it before. So as you have noticed, all attendees are on listen-only mode. And if you have a question uh, throughout the presentation, you can raise your hand and you have a button on uh, the GoToWebinar control panel where you can do that. You also have a question box where you can write your question and then we will uh, read it out loud in due time. The webinar will last for about one hour um, and um, it will be recorded and it will be made available on the 10YFP SCP Clearinghouse YouTube channel. I think this is it. Um, I will give the floor uh, to Mr. Farid Yaker, who is the program officer at UNEP in charge of the SPP program. Thank you, Irina, and goodbye, everyone. Hope we're connected. Can you confirm, Irina? Well, we are. Okay. So, um, I'm Farid Yaker. I'm in charge of uh, sustainable public procurement here in Paris, where we have the UNEP DTIE office, Division of Technology, Industry and Economics. I'd like to welcome all the participants from Asia. So we will start with a rapid presentation of the concept of sustainable public procurement and of the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production, and also our sustainable public procurement program that is part of this framework. Then we will have a presentation from Green Purchasing Network Malaysia, delivered by, by Ms. Johnny Chan, and then a presentation from Jean-Louis A, who is the Director of Planet Procurement, will present the, the work of his company, and then finally we'll have, hopefully, she hasn't yet arrived, but we hope she will be here soon, a presentation of Ms. Ning from uh, ICLEI on green public procurement, the Green Public Procurement Partnership that is, uh, has just been established in China. And then we'll have some time for discussions and closing. Next. So in UNEP, we use the concept of sustainable public procurement. So as you can see on the slide, this concept incorporates the three dimensions of social, environment, and economic, as described or determined at the Rio conference in 1992. So Really, uh, what for us what is important is that all the three dimensions are concerned are uh, being uh, targeted by uh, SPP, and we say that SPP is a process whereby public organizations, of course, procure goods, services, and works. However, there are two uh, specificities to this concept. It's first of all that we try to achieve value for money on a whole life cycle basis. We take into account the life cycle approach concept and second that we uh, generate benefits not only for the procuring organization for us for the purchasers but also for society and the economy and the same in the same time we uh, also try to reduce negative impact on the environment so whenever you to give you an example whenever you purchase uh, for example a vehicle you don't look just at uh, the characteristics of the vehicle, the price, uh, the performance, uh, the uh, if it's uh, beautiful or not, but also you see if it uh, emits uh, high levels of uh, greenhouse gases, if it really consumes a lot of energy, because this has an impact maybe on air quality in a city, so you will have some externalities that you will be responsible for, and you need to care about uh, the situation of others and not just about 
the, the, the your own the needs in, in this respect. Next, we also use the concept of uh, a green public procurement, which, which is actually mostly used in in Asia. In Asia, we also use green government procurement, which is very similar to uh, GPP. And here, we only consider the environmental dimension. So the EU defined GPP as the approach by which public authorities they integrate environmental criteria into all stages of the procurement process from uh, needs definition to uh, management of contract and disposal of goods and also considering that this procurement and the cost of procured goods and services over their whole life cycle. So the, uh, the concept of life, the life cycle approach is also embedded in the concept of GPP. So the, 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 this webinar is organized in the framework of what we call the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production, which was adopted at the Rio Plus 20 conference in 2012. So it's a global framework that has been adopted by the international community in order to accelerate the shift towards SCP patterns in both developed and developing countries. So it's really the, the effort of the international community at world level to really move towards more sustainable consumption and production patterns. And this framework actually uh, for the moment has defined or has approved six programs in, in six different areas. Uh, you can see them on the screen and sustainable public procurement is one of those initial programs. So what are the objectives of this program? First of all, to build the case for SPP to really um, prove that it is a very uh, useful concept that can uh, allow us and can be effective to promote greener economies and sustainable development. So we really make the case for SPP to support the SPP of NSP, of, uh, support the implementation of sustainable public procurement on the ground uh, by in, by making sure that we increase collaboration between all the stakeholders, but by making sure that uh, players, stakeholders, implementers have access to all the need tools uh, whenever they they're, they're, they're working on and, and uh, providing support to uh, players on the ground and whenever they are implementing SPP. So uh, we have tools like the SCP Clearinghouse uh, where we centralize and uh, we uh, uh, do an inventory of all the goods and invite you to, to visit this uh, clearinghouse if you need, if you have a need for uh, implementation tools. And three, to uh, make sure that all the players cooperate and exchange, for example, by creating dedicated working groups. For the moment, we have 86 partners located in uh, various regions of the world. It's pretty well uh, distributed. And they these players come from uh, different types of organizations. We have governmental organizations, NGOs, IGOs, uh, individual consultants, and uh, also uh, we have also business representatives that are in the program. So I mentioned the, the working groups that we have. So there is a work plan that is being implemented by the program and the next one, I mean, yes, the next one will take place from 2016 to 2017. We have four main work areas. As you can see, the first one is implementation because it's a major objective. So we really assist uh, countries, organizations in putting in place SPP policies and into implementing those policies. So we provide financial and technical support for SPP implementation. As I said, we make sure that uh, tools like methodologies, capacity building tools, procurement guidelines, uh, laws, the legal frameworks are exchanged between all the implementing organizations. We have, we're trying to develop flagship project, project projects, which are large scale projects that uh, can really accelerate the shift of SPP. We have also, uh, what we call um, this, uh, the, um, the trust fund that can provide also small-scale 
support to implementation. And right now we have three projects that are being uh, implemented, and hopefully we still have we will have a, a call for proposal in the near future to allow you also to access funding uh, for implementation. We also try to assess implementation and impact. So uh, we try to monitor SPP implementation because we have to uh, really find out how much of SPP is being done on the ground and we need to develop frameworks to be able to benchmark and measure uh, the level of implementation and also to measure the impact. We try to identify obstacles and, and promote innovative solutions, for example, to allow SMEs to take part in sustainable public procurement or in public procurement. And we try to increase the collaboration with the private sector in the fields of eco-labels, for example, by promoting resource-efficient business models and circular economy, and uh, by promoting supply chain sustainability. So here you can see on the screen some of the outputs from the previous uh, work plan, 2014-2015. So we have developed SPP principles. We have also uh, worked on the issue of uh, product service systems, replacing uh, the, the procurement of goods with the procurement of services. We're working on, we worked also on the uh, sustainability of supply chain. And every three years, we do a global review, which is a snapshot of SPP GPP implementation. We are working on the next one, but the 2013 is available on, the web, on our website. And I will just finish by telling you that we will be active also at the Conference of Parties of the uh, Climate Change Convention in Paris uh, in a few days. So we are organizing, in particular, one, one event, which is a side event, which will be uh, targeting or which will be focused on the redu re reducing GHG emissions through sustainable public procurement. So if you are around of, or if you have representatives in Paris uh, at this time, please send them the information so that they can attend this uh, webinar really dedicated to low carbon procurement, how we can promote or fight climate change through procurement. So you have the information on the screen, and I'm not going to repeat this. So the last call will be for you to join the SPP program, because you need to, by joining the SPP program, you will be joining the international SPP community, contributing to uh, ensuring that this tool becomes an effective tool, that it is recognized, and that it is widely used to promote sustainable development objectives. Thank you very much, and I now leave the floor for the presenters. Thank you, Farid. Johnny? Yes. I can. Yes. I'm ready. Yes, please. I shall start now. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Irena. OK. I shall start with the Malaysian scenario where these are the issues and challenges that are commonly known among us. And uh, to begin with, from the very start, well, I don't think anybody bothered about what is green procurement and always considering it as a very expensive process to go green. And of course, it was connected to this high initial cost for the production of green products and services. And definitely, there was a big lack of expertise in green procurement. Even till now, I do believe the local industries and suppliers are not so ready. Also, there is no market drive for the green products locally. And to add to that, there were no guidelines and procedures for implementation of green procurement. In the meantime, there was this availability of other products, alternatives, traditional products, services, uh, which they could turn to. So coupled with that, there were difficulties to evaluate what were the impacts of green procurement. Was it going to be of any benefit, the evaluating system, and all this was not there. Next, please. The framework that we have 
are divided into areas, as can be seen on the screen. Government moving to the industries and manufacturing on products and services to the consumers and users, and bringing forward cross-cutting issues, and finally, of course, coordination, collaboration with other parties, the monitoring and evaluation. Next, please. These were the initiatives that were set out in the six areas of the framework. And uh, briefly, it shows, um, I shall go through very quickly, the government took the initiative to set out legal frameworks and also developing capacities, uh, capacity building. And this was done by the Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, and financed and led by the Ministry of Finance of Malaysia. And also the endorsement by the Ministry for implementing the eco-labeling programs. Next, please. Continuing from that, this was the policy framework that was set out as a guide for effective coordination and then to address all the different changes on patterns and behavior among industry, consumers, in the key sectors of sustainable buildings, sustainable food, sustainable transport, and sustainable. Oops. Next, please. This is the, oops, disappeared. All right, sorry, it disappeared for a while. This is the My Hijau program. The word hijau means green, and it was set up by the ministry to encourage producers to encourage the consumers to understand what it was to buy green. Um, in fact, it was like a blanket, an umbrella label to take care of all the eco-labels that were currently being used in Malaysia. Next, please. In the second initiative, targeted at the industries and the manufacturers, the main issue, of course, was to make sure there was awareness and knowledge sharing. So that's why the Mahijau Industry and SM Small and Medium Sized Enterprises program was launched. And in the capacity building sector, there was a lot of um, skill developments towards green productivity, cleaner production, the environmental management system, energy managers, and they even launched the green tech coaching sessions for local manufacturers to gear them towards the eco-labeling scheme. Of course, in Malaysia, we were also assisted very well in the GTFS funding, where a certain amount of money was put aside and you could apply for, it was like a green loan if you qualified Johnny, can you hear me? We lost the sound. I can hear you. Johnny, can you hear me? Johnny? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Because I saw it was um, disconnected. 
All right. For the third initiative, it was geared towards the products and services. So the setting up of the green labeling system, the My Hijau label, and this was launched during the International Green Technology and Eco Products Exhibition Malaysia in 2012, and it, it was meant to coordinate all the green labels of Malaysia. And of course, they launched to the directory, uh, the Malaysian Green Tech Directory, which Can is actually a database. Just a yes. It seems that there is no sound and um, okay. attendees. Before, before. No, right now. Ten twenty-two. I can hear you. Can hear okay, you. Uh, my microphone. Is... Are we okay now? Yes. Yes. Are we okay now? Please, Johnny. Thank you. Yes. Next, please. And going on to the fourth initiative, which, oh, yes, thank you, which um, targeted the consumers and users, so which means awareness was very important. So there was a lot of education on green technology, publication of um, introduction to the government green procurement, and publication of introduction on green technology for SMEs and entrepreneurs. So together with all this, there was promotions and campaigns and exhibitions and conferences. Of course, the two of these, um, GPNM was very, very uh, involved in um, all these road shows and, of course, the International Green Tech and Eco Products Exhibition, iGEM. Next, please. And to reach to a further audience, probably internationally, the database portal was set up, and that was by the Malaysian Green Technology Corporation, which was Green Tech Malaysia's portal, as seen. And they also communicated publicly through Facebook, YouTube, etc. Next, please. That's a grab from. And the last initiative, of course, was coordination, collaboration with external parties, and finally monitoring and evaluation. And there was the establishment of the National Green Technology and Climate Change Council with the working groups and collaboration with international associations, namely Global Equilibrium Network the International Green Purchasing Network, and um, from which GPNM is under, and of course, ASEAN Plus 3 GPP EL Network by UNEP. Next, please. A picture to show the uh, National Green Technology Council, which collaborates closely with GEN, IGPN, and also UNEP. Next, please. Chaired by the Prime Minister. Next, please. This is a picture of the first page of the program of IGEM 2010, and that was the first year that this International Green Tech and Eco Products Exhibition and Conference was held in Malaysia. As you can see from the logos, GPNM was the co-partner with the Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, and the whole conceptual idea had been mooted by GPNM, and it was very, very well taken up by the Ministry, and it has continued till today, 2015. Next, please. Also, a picture of iGEM 2012, where we had um, a very good um, experts meeting. Next, please. There you are. It was the expert meeting on government green procurement. Also, collaboration with the Asia Productivity Organization and the Malaysian counterpart, which is Malaysia Productivity Corporation. And uh, we had a very successful um, collaboration and 
the expert meeting was uh, documented and produced into, and we, GPNM, uh, published a book calling it the Roadmap to Government Green Procurement. The next year, we did the Green Productivity Expo, which was the uh, International Green Purchasing Conference Malaysia, where GPNM collaborated with the Malaysia Productivity Corporation. Next, please, to show. Next, please. Yes, this is our <laughs> uh, logo when we had the Green Productivity Expo where uh, Malaysia Productivity Corporation worked hand in hand with us and GPNM. In GPN Malaysia, a bit about um, this journey that we have taken, established at, way back in 2003. We are a member of IGPN. Um, the Secretary General is a council member. Last year, we established the International GPN Berhad, uh, which is um, a non-profit corporation registered under the Registrar of Companies. And GPNM Malaysia ha uh, has been very, very active. We actually organized numerous awareness and promotion programs. Every year, we will have something on, to be honest. We had seminars, we had workshops, we are always at meetings. Even the um, Ministry of Finance budget dialogues, we are always there to give our well, three cents worth. Um, GPNM also developed the Eco Products database where we were given financial assistance by the um, Ministry of International Trade and Industry. <laughs> and as I said earlier, we were the ones who actually established IGEM, the International uh, Green. Uh, Green Technology and Eco Products Exhibition Malaysia, together with the Ministry and IGEM, has been ongoing from 2010 till now. Johnny, we also launched the yes. Excuse me, two more minutes. Yes. Two more minutes, please. Sure. Um, in that case, I'll talk about the Green Store. Can we next, please? Okay. So. GPNM, because, next please, uh, we wanted to show that availability of green products is there. We continued um, to push for an actual physical store to showcase the products. And here we had um, study visits to Seoul to show. Next please, please continue. And part of the activities was to set up this green store. Next, please. And um, this green store, the actual physical store, is in existence. Here we have the Deputy Minister and GPNM. Next, please. We have also participated in many sessions which are outside the country. Here we participated at the GIST SCP Achievement Session. And GPNM being actively promoting green technologies and products. We also um, um, go hand in hand with the, founda the Green Foundation of the Ministry at their road shows and their carnivals. Next, please. To show that uh, we support um, eco products and uh, we want to be there. And uh, last year, of course, we co organized the International Conference on Green Procurement and Eco Labels in Kuala Lumpur. And here, um, next, please. We, we, we make sure that um, we are on the ground to see things on the ground. And here, a delegation from Korea was taken on a palm oil visit. Next, please. We also show, bring them to uh, the Solid Waste Corporation. And the last um, program that we will be actively involved in is this high-level training workshop on the implementation of green public procurement and eco-labeling in Asia-Pacific countries, which will happen next month, 15 to 17 December, organized by UNEP, collaboration with KT, MEP, China, our ministry, and GPNM. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johnny. Now let's move on to our next uh, presenter. Jean-Louis. 
Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, thank you. So, thank you very much, Irina. I'm Jean-Louis Hay, the director of Planet Procurement, which is a consultancy in sustainable procurement. Next. Yeah, you can go to next, Irina. Thank you. Uh, so, I have 10 minutes to present you who we are, where we are, um, what we do, and I'll make a focus on three activities I think can be of interest for you, ladies and gents. Next, please. All right, so who we are, are we really sustainable procurement specialists? So we think that to uh, successfully advise and train and find solutions for uh, our organizations, uh, we need to combine the skills of procurement and strategic procurement, I should say, with the skills of sustainability, including environmental, social, and economic aspects. And that what makes us very efficient when we uh, provide our services in terms of sustainable procurement. That's our business, uh, that's our purpose, that's what we do. Next please. All right, so where we are. So we are based in, in, uh, in Australia, but we also have offices in Hong Kong. We have partners in Europe and in Brazil, other sustainable procurement consultancies uh, we can work with on international projects. And we are also involved on international in initiatives, such as the uh, project of ISO 20400 on sustainable procurement, and I'm the chair of the Australian delegation on this project. And of course, we are a member of the the UN SPP program. Next, please. What we do. So, we have two main areas of services. The first one is how to help organizations getting started in their journey towards sustainable public procurement. Um, the third thing we can do is to provide um, sort of gap analysis of where is your organization today to understand what's the situation, what's the context, and what's the best way forward. We also help organizations to set their priorities in terms of you know, sustainable procurement strategy, policy, and also in terms of key categories of spend, goods and services, equipment, and key suppliers. And the last one, around building the case for change is really important because in the journey towards sustainable procurement, there's a need to communicate and to convince those key decision makers and influential stakeholders to get on board with you on that journey. So change management is really key. So once an organization has started, we can help it getting things done. <coughs> Sorry. So the first thing we can do is help uh, individuals or teams that are, you know, that have procurement projects, sourcing activities, tenders or contracts. We can help them to integrate sustainability into the procurement process. We also help uh, organizations to build the capability and the skill set of their people in that field. And we also um, help organizations to adapt their governance structure, the procedures, the processes, uh, the reporting systems uh, to embed sustainability as a business as usual activity. So I'm going to focus uh, today on three activities which are with the blue circle. Next please. All right, so the first one, the first focus is how to start the journey towards SPP. The first thing we recommend is to uh, undertake a sort of gap analysis of the current situation. And to do it, um, it is very important to analyze um, three main areas uh, that make a procurement function, a procurement activity in an organization. These are the strategy, the organization, and the process. And it's only when you combine these three areas that can, you can have a fairly realistic view of the current situation and then 
uh, understand what is the best way forward, what is the best strategy. And in this, in this approach, we really align with the, the future ISO standard on sustainable procurement, ISO 20400. So that's the first step requirement, the gap analysis. Next, please. Focus number two is around what does a good SPP training session look like? I've myself conducted a lot of training sessions in the past eight years, and <clears throat> we have a conviction around what makes a very good training session on sustainable procurement. And it's basically around giving the opportunity to participants to think and work on their own situations, their own projects, goods and services, categories, their own context, their own sustainability issues, well, in a few words, their own life. What they need to do is to be able, during a training session, to uh, use some tools, uh, use some guidance to really get into it and to understand that, that they can do it. And, the, and then with the, the trainer, you can uh, guide them uh, in the best way possible. Next, please. An example of tool we often using in those workshops is what we call the category sustainability mind map. <coughs> Sorry. This is a very simple and user-friendly tool that enables people, maybe procurement people, to understand where are the most important sustainability issues on their category. Now let me give you two examples of completed uh, category sustainability mind maps. Next, please. So the first example is uh, about this tool being used by people in uh, the Ministry, Ministry of Transport for New South Wales in Australia. So one group was working on self-driving trains and very quickly they understood that uh, the main uh, issues and priorities for this category was around, were around the contribution to local economy and the opportunities given to SMEs uh, as part of this project because it's such a big construction project that there's a lot of uh, objectives related to uh, creating jobs locally. If you take the example of the next slide, which is around printers, it's a very, very different category, of course, and very quickly the other groups saw that they were very different. And when you talk about printers, of course, you talk about use of resources, carbon footprint, but you also talk about consumer data protection and privacy, which is really important. So there's just uh, two examples to show you that um, in a training session, in a workshop, you can very quickly help people to understand where are the priorities for them in terms of sustainability for their own goods and services. Next, please. All right, uh, the, um, the last focus I'm going to make today is around solutions and technology solutions to help um, people and organizations being more efficient in terms of managing this sustainable procurement issue. So we're really keen in Planet Pokemon to promote uh, those solutions that makes life easier. And this is one of the solutions. Uh, it's, it has been developed by our UK partner, Action Sustainability. And what they developed is a, is a reporting system on sustainability. And what it does is enabling an organization to track their sustainability performance of their suppliers on their own projects and contracts. So we're not talking about uh, evaluating the compliance of suppliers with general international norms of behavior or management systems. We are talking about tracking how suppliers are performing on your contracts versus your indicators and measures, performance measures. So I'm going to show you some screenshots of this solution, which is cloud-based. And the first uh, screenshot is shows the corporate dashboard, which it could be used by maybe the sustainable procurement manager or 
the chief procurement officer or the sustainability manager. And what it does, it, it gives on one page an overview of how you are progressing and su succeeding in each sustainability issue you are focusing on across your projects, across your contracts, across your spend. And it enables you to track with time how you perform in that. So that's, that's just an overview of, of the main dashboard. And then if we go to the next slide, I can show you how it works quite quickly. So basically what you do is you give access to the suppliers to the system on maybe one contract, one project. And what they do is every quarter they're going to input some data around the metrics, sustainability metrics that you are monitoring. And then as the suppliers, all your suppliers on, on all your projects are inputting this data, you can then have a collection of data across projects, across contacts. And we can see it on the next slide. So as you input some data in the system, uh, then you will be able to um, issue and process some information about your performance. That's an example here of some indicators related to uh, employees, labor. So you can see percentage of local workforce, uh, percentage of paid living wage. So you can have all these data available. And what you can also do, next slide, is to get some uh, very nice graphics that can help you to understand how you're progressing uh, on um, sustainability issues or even at the indicator level. So you can go on, for example, proportion of waste recycled and you can see across your projects how you are performing and how you're progressing. So um, that's, that was just a few screenshots to show you the, uh, this solution. Um, so next slide, please. So that, that's it for me for today. Um, if you have other questions, I would be really um, happy to respond to them after the presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jean-Louis. Now uh, we're going to move to our um, last presenter. Yes, I'm going to unmute you. And it should be fine right now. Yes, good morning, Irina. Good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Yeah, good. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Nancy Ning from ECLEI. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Fred Yaker and Irina, for organizing this webinar. And also, thank you for the two presenters' uh, informative and inno innovative uh, presentations. Uh, and for me, my presentation, the, the, as you can see, it's about the Green Public Procurement Partnership uh, uh, with the focus in China. Uh, next, please. So basically, I would like to tell you uh, something about ECLEI and also the ECLEI and our GPP or SPP programs, and also uh, the brief introduction of GPP partnership uh, with the focus of GPP in China. And also, I would like to introduce a little bit about our future work. Yes, as you can see, uh, our uh, organization is ECLEI Local Government for Sustainability, and uh, we are based in East Asia. So our main uh, work area is in China, Japan, Korea, and uh, Mongolia. And for ECLEI, ECLEI is the world's leading global network of uh, uh, about 1,000 local governments in 86 countries uh, dedicated to sustainable development. Mm, yes, next please. Uh, and uh, we, our uh, ECLE uh, was funded in 1990 uh, by 200 local governments from 43 countries at UN headquarters in New York. And uh, our vision is to connect leaders' actually, uh, actions and provide gateway to solutions. And this photo should... Uh, 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 yeah, this photo shows our uh, ECLEI World Congress this April in Seoul. As you can see, we uh, uh, invited many local government leaders uh, to uh, present their uh, local experience uh, in Seoul this April. Next, please. 
And for uh, the GPP and SPP program in ECLE, uh, ECLE has been working on a, a sustainable procurement for almost two decades for helping public authorities to implement GPP, spread uh, awareness of the concept, develop new approaches, and encourage policy developments at the European and international level. So uh, the, our European uh, uh, office uh, has a lot of uh, experts expertise and the experience in this area. For example, uh, we have our brand program which is called Eco Procurer and also we have the Procurer Plus campaign, the sustainable procurement campaign. And also the the, uh, the recently program is the 10 uh, YFP sustainable public uh, uh, procurement program uh, which, which is co-organized by UNEP, KT and ECLE. Next please. And for uh, the, the Eco Procure China, this is the program um, we uh, in, uh, introduced uh, the in, uh, our international Eco Procure brand into China uh, to promote green public procurement among Chinese local governments through international exchange and dialogues. And you can see from the photo, the first event was held in Beijing in 2014 and we have the experts from Malaysia, Japan uh, and Korea and uh, also other European countries and cities and also uh, the Chinese experts and also the red pack the red part uh, the, the report so you can download our uh, uh, event report from the, the link we provide on this uh, page. Next please. And this year is the second time we have our Eco Procurer China uh, uh, event. This event uh, uh, was a sub forum uh, was held during the Eco Forum Global Annual Conference in Guiyang, uh, and uh, also. As you can see, the Mr. Farid Yaker and also the, the experts, the international experts and the experts and the Chinese experts uh, all come together and also the uh, local government officials of, uh, in China, they come in Guiyang together to share uh, the international and national experience uh, with the focus on the local uh, levels. And as a result, the Green Public Procurement Partnership, uh, we will, I will call it as a GPP partnership, was launched at the end of our sub-forum jointly by ECLE and uh, our partners. Uh, still on the right part is our shoes part of our report and you can download our report from uh, the link we provide in the page. This is in our ECLE uh, website. Next please. And uh, here is a brief introduction for our GPP partnership. First of all, we want to say we are very honored to be the partner of uh, the 10 YFP uh, on SPP program. And uh, since we are very new uh, established uh, partnership, uh, so we still have many things to do. Uh, here we just give you a brief introduction. As you can see, the purpose of this partnership is to establish the network and to provide information sharing platform and to raise the awareness of the GPP and also to enhance the capacity, especially the local government officials uh, in China. And uh, the participants of this partnership, it should be, uh, it could be local governments and uh, companies and also the organizations who are interested in the implementation of GPP. And for the structure, uh, our plan for this partnership, it will be a loose network. Uh, so uh, local governments, companies and organizations uh, who are interested in the GPP, they, are, they can all join this partnership. And uh, the secretariat is uh, in our office, ECLE East Asia office. And uh, the main program elements uh, include the, the Eco Procure China annual event and the online platform and uh, a workshop, case study and the newsletter and etc. Uh, et and uh, for the benefits for the 
uh, participants of GPV partnership, it could be they can get the latest information and they can have the interaction with the various stakeholders. And also they can, through this platform, to demonstrate their achievement and also explore potential cooperations uh, within this partnership. And so far, we have the partners uh, include the China Environment United uh, Certification Center, the Eco Forum Global, and the Sustainability Cons uh, Consortium, uh, Chinese Business Council for Sustainability, and also Ten Y PSPP program. And also, we have the Tianjin City as our new member, a new partner. Uh, thank you. So uh, next, I would like to introduce some uh, background for the GPP in China. Here is the legal uh, framework of the GPP in China. So uh, so far, we don't have a separate uh, GPP uh, law or regulation in China. Uh, we have our uh, government procurement law, which is uh, a basic. Uh, 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 regulation uh, in this area, uh, which was uh, established in 2003, and since uh, 2003, we have uh, uh, different, we have uh, various uh, laws and regulations as shown in this table. And the uh, last year, we have the implementing regulations on the government procurement law, which provided the detailed regulation for the implementation uh, of the government procurement law, and we believe in the near future we will have a, a separate law for GPP. And from this chart, you can see the government procurement uh, volume in China keep increasing, and the volume is quite high in China. Uh, next, please. And uh, in China, currently, we have two systems in the GPP uh, um, areas. The first one is called China Environmental Labeling. Uh, it's similar to the eco-labeling, uh, as uh, Joni introduced uh, in, uh, in her presentation. Uh, so this one was uh, is managed by the Minister of Finance and the Ministry of Environmental Protection. And this list is a biannually updated list. And last updated to eight, uh, 16th as of August of this year. And another system is called Energy Conservation Certification. Uh, this one is organized by Minister of Finance and our National Develop Development and Reform Committee. This one is also a biannual, uh, annually updated list. Uh, I think the, the, the part was missing. And the last updated is to 18th uh, uh, as of August of 2015 of this year. Next, please. And you can see from this chart, uh, we have uh, three different uh, types of procurement in China, uh, project service goods. As you can see, the project uh, is contributed uh, more than half of the procurement, but still we currently we only focus on the, uh, the, the product procurement. So we believe in the future we still have a potential, a huge potential in the procurement area. And for the share of the procurement, uh, you can see uh, the local governments, they really play a significant role in these procurement activities. Next, please. So uh, why we want to promote GPP in China? Uh, first of all, as I, uh, uh, I showed in as a, uh, showed in the last uh, chart, we have the huge purchasing power and procurement skill in China, and also this will uh, result in incredible environmental benefits. Then contribution to the global environment protection. At the same time, it will cause uh, result uh, leading lead the social benefits. For example, the public awareness of the environmental protection. Also, on the other hand, it, it can develop the circular economy. It will uh, enhance our economic development. Next, please. We did a, a research on the barriers of GPP in, in China. These are uh, several reasons that may be the, the barriers of, 
of GPP implementation in China. For example, the policy framework of GPP is not complete, and the scope of green procurement is limited. Uh, the product market is fragmented, and uh, we have the local protectionism in China because our countries do. Uh, we have different. Uh, uh, provinces and local governments, and the, the limitations of the certification schemes, and also the lack of technical knowledge among the procurement officers, the low awareness of GPP of the stakeholders, the low willingness of green pro procurement of the users, and also the relevant high uh, price of the green products. Uh, next, please. Based on that uh, survey result, we believe uh, in, uh, for the GBP development in China, the next steps should be set criteria from least based to the performance-based method. And also, we should uh, conduct procurement training and capacity building. Also, increase knowledge exchange and information sharing, uh, and also for the uh, products uh, for the procurement, we should uh, uh, change from products to service and also include the project procurement. Also, we have to enhance the green procurement awareness and motivate the local governments in the developed regions to behave, to uh, implement in advance and also give incentive to the green procurement activities and also promote the life cycle cost evaluation method. Next, please. And for our GPP partnership, here we would like to share our future work plan. So we are planning to conduct a local government needs assessment to know uh, what the real uh, uh, needs of the local government, and also we are planning to develop to, uh, to develop the training and capacity building program, and also we are planning to uh, have our performance based uh, method to development. Next, please. And. Uh, uh, based on our GPP partnership with our partners, uh, we are planning to implement various GPP promotion works in China uh, next year and also in the coming, uh, in the near future. Uh, basically in four areas, one is the international exchange because we have uh, our professional experience in this area and also we have a uh, uh, international resources. Uh, we are aiming. To, uh, we are planning to launch our online platform soon. And uh, another one is a capacity building. We will develop the training program, and, and maybe next year we will have a one-day compact program for Chinese local government officials. And also we will uh, uh, focus on the publication area. We will. Uh, uh, make his study and also send out uh, the newsletter to the partners. And also last part is the GPP-2. We will focus on the performance evaluation and we will develop the guideline and also to figure out the potentials of GPP like uh, the uh, GHG reductions. Uh, next please. So this is my email. Uh, so for this GPP partnership, if you have further questions, you can reach to me. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, and thanks to other speakers as well. So we can now move to the questions and answers session as we reach the end of the webinar. I will check if we have any questions from uh, attendees. I have none. Um, dear all, please be reminded that you can uh, use the raise your hand button on the go to webinar um, control panel if you wish to ask a question or make a comment. Okay, then no questions. <laughs>
Um, in this case, I would like to thank you all again for um, for being here, for joining us for this webinar. Very interesting and enriching. Many thanks to our speakers uh, who presented their uh, projects, programs, and initiatives. And as I already said, the webinar has been recorded and we will make it available at the SAP Clearinghouse YouTube channel. And we will also send the follow-up email shortly with the presentation and all the necessary links. Thank you very much. Have a good day, good afternoon, or good evening. And talk to you soon. Bye.